everybody. Bob here, and I'm with Brian. And Beth. And we're in Brian's backyard. It's a lovely day. It's about 23 degrees. It's just perfect for exercising outside. We have a great deck here. And today our workout is called Exercises for Seniors for the Brain, for the Heart, and for the Back. And the warm up is going to be a special warm up today. It's a brain gym warm up. And the acronym to remember the brain gym exercises is PACE. P for positive thinking, A for cross actions, C for clearing your meridians, and E for electricity or water. And we're gonna do all that in the warm up. So the first thing we're going to do for our warm up is we're going to stand in a uh, in a very comfortable position. You can call it the mountain pose if you want or the athletic stance where your legs are shoulder width apart and you're soft in the knees, your legs are not locked. Your shoulders are down and back and relaxed and your palms are forward. And we're going to close our eyes and we're going to concentrate for about 20 seconds on positive things. But you have to be very specific to do this. So I'm going to think about my garden. Brian was telling me about his, so it's motivated me to think about my garden for 20 seconds with my eyes shut and no noise except nature. Here we go. Okay, you can open your eyes. So this is the P in pace. This is the positive thinking in the brain gym warm up. Okay, we're gonna do it again except this time. And by the way, if you think this is too hard, you just don't have to do this, but I'm gonna cross my legs at the ankles. Doesn't matter which one goes in front. I'm gonna cross my arms at the wrists and I'm gonna grab my fingers and <coughs> place my hands on my heart. So if you wanna go back to the athletic stance to do uh, the um, positive thinking a second time, that's okay. So I'm going to think about my garden again, trying not to fall over because I can feel my core muscles starting to work because I'm wobbling here. So here I go. Think about something positive. Okay, you can relax and untangle yourself. That was a little harder for me because I was in that unstable position and I was worried about falling over. So my brain was going, what's going on with my body? But I did eventually get to my garden. So the third time, the next, the last and third positive thinking thing is, we're gonna, we don't have to, we can stand in the mountain pose, but I'm gonna cross over the other way and then put the other one on top, grab my fingers, place it on my heart, I'm going to think about my garden one last time. When you're ready, 20 seconds, here we go. And relax and untangle yourself. So that's the P. The A is the actions. And the actions, some of these you've done before in our work uh, workouts, but our warm-ups, but uh, the actions are all about crossing over. So we're just going to step touch to start, and I use my arms to cross over. When I say cross over, you have a, a vertical prime meridian running through your body and divide your body into half or two parts, and this is a crossover with the arms. And I think I'm ready, so I'm gonna cross over behind with my feet. And a warm up usually lasts for around five minutes. So when you're at the gym or when you're out for some kind of exercise outside, tennis, riding a bike, make sure you warm up for about five minutes before you do it. So now I'm gonna cross over in front, still working my arms. 
This is easy to do, right? We've done this a million times, all of us in the fitness world. So we know how to do this. So now I'm gonna tap behind, bend my legs and tap my feet. Well, maybe. Depends if your legs bend that way. Crossing over. Then I'm gonna tap in front, lift up my leg kind of sideways, like I'm gonna kick a soccer ball. Grab for my ankle. This is a little harder. I'm gonna use my elbows and try to reach my knees. Lift my legs straight up and try to reach my knees. I'm crossing over. And then the last one, I'm just gonna reach across, tap my toes. So this is the action part of the PACE acronym, standing for crossover actions. Good, let's just step touch again. And we're going to do two step touches to the one way and then two back. So here we go. One, two, and then two back. And one, two, one, two. Because we're getting ready for the crossover known as the grapevine. So let's try a crossover behind. Grapevine. Great for your hips, by the way. So it's one, two, three, touch. One, two, three, four. One, two. Let's change it to a grapevine in front. So step in front. Step in front. You feel your brain working back there, Brian? Uh, it's numb at the moment, but numb. I can't do that. And we'll do one more. I did a behind and an in front. Good. Shake right. that out. And then. Before we leave the crossover actions, I have my juggling balls. This one's called Let's Party. That's for Daffy to hold on to. And Brian, you're gonna get uh, solid as a rock. That's me, man. He's got so many rocks in his, in his garden. And I've got, love is everywhere. Okay, so let's just throw it up with one hand for a second and try to catch it. You don't have to throw it very high. And then try the other hand, just throw it and catch it. But this is all about crossover actions. So when you're ready, I want you to cross over the prime meridian, throw it and catch it. Oh. Yeah, if you drop it, make sure you squat to get it instead of bending at the waist. So we're crossing over. Now, when you think you've got this, and our five minutes is almost up for our warm up, I'm going to tap in front as I cross over catching the juggling ball. I mean, you can do any of those crossovers. You could tap behind. Huh. You could maybe kick behind. <laughs> Make sure you squat, Gabby. We don't want to show you. We don't want to drop it and show these people this. No. Right, I know you guys know how to do that. Okay, that's enough. So these you can put down. That's the end of our warm up. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the. We did the P for positive thinking, the A for the actions that cross over, and we're going to do the C for clearing our meridians, all our energy um, uh, hubs or um, spots in your body where they they pass through and gather up more energy and move around so that everything works in your body. So the, the uh, meridians, we're gonna clear them, but we're, instead of doing all those nine tapping spots, you know, tap, tap, tap to get rid of the clogged energy, we're just gonna tap the uh, one here that, this is your collarbone and there's the soft spot 
And if you take your finger, your, your um, pointer finger in your thumb and you place it just a little bit below the soft spot at your, uh, what is it, your K27 or something, I don't know, it's got a name. Anyway, that's the spot that you're gonna tap. And you can tap it with just those fingers or you can do it like I'm gonna do it. So we're gonna just tap there. That's gonna clear our meridian. And this is the main meridian that goes right down through the center of your body. Notice we're tapping on either side of that meridian to tell the energy to come on, wake up, start moving, do your job. Take your energy to the different muscles and cells in your body that need it. And when I tell people to tap, I say, you don't have to do it too hard. It's your body, you don't wanna bruise yourself. So you can do it lightly, that'll still work. So we're clearing our meridian, our main meridian. If you wanna tap all those nine different um, meridian points that we've done in another video, you can. You know, under the armpit, etc., top of the head. Okay, good. And then the last part of PACE for our warm up here is electricity. And so we all have water. Don't we mind? Yes. So get your water and have a swig. You want one of these things? Is that your own? Okay, have a good drink. Because your body is apparently 60, 65% water. And I had to have a, an ultrasound done last week on my bladder. And they told me that before I, I come to the, uh, the office, I needed to drink a liter of water. So I thought to myself, oh my goodness, me drink a liter of water? So I tried and I did get it in there. And thank goodness, because when they do an ultrasound, if you don't have that water in you, especially if they're checking out your bladder, uh, they can't see it. So, one more electricity. So remember, it's P for positive thinking, always be positive. A for actions, hopefully you, whatever you do, you can cross over. C for clearing your meridians, you can do this anytime you want. And E for drinking water. Okay, we're moving on now to your heart and we're going to start off with um, our weights so we need some weights and one in each hand and they don't even have to be the same size so brian has a selection here so go ahead brian what are you going to use take well i'm going to use a different i'm going to use a really light one and a heavier one so i've got a five and a one instead of having the same weight something different okay and you and you, uh, if you've been watching these videos, you know the, this weight routine that we do. So let's just start doing it. So you know what? We're going to get in the goalpost position and do the first overhead press. So our arms are at like right angles at the elbow. And we're just pushing over up above our head as high as we can get it. And we always think, well, if we're going to do our upper body, we might as well do something with our lower body. So this is the one that we tend to do the most. And that's because it's a good exercise for your lower body. So I'm lifting my knees as high as I can get as I push overhead. All right, we're working with weights. Of course, your body is a weight. If you don't like these weights because they're too heavy, just pretend you have weights and do the exercise. That's pretty good, right? And one more, that would be 10. So we're gonna do our pec press, bring our arms in, our forearms in. And as we do that, I'm gonna cross over with a tap. Why not? I learned that crossing over helps my brain. Brain gym, remember? Now I, I have a light weight in my right hand, a one and a five in my left. So for the next exercise, the next way exercise, I'm going to switch. And one more, right? Switch, put my feet together, do our Dairy Queen dip. So we're still in the goalpost positions. Put my knees together and push them forward as I dip. So I rotate a little bit in the shoulders. 
So our workout usually involves some kind of a weight routine and the energy that you're using to do this weight routine comes from your muscles. As you eat food, your body changes it into glucose, stores it in your muscles. One more. Right, I'm gonna switch again, switch sides, because I have to do my tree, right? So my feet are gonna go really, really wide. I'm gonna hug the tree and do a squat. So I'm pushing my hips down and back. I've still got that arch in my low back as I hug the tree. So as we use weights, we get the energy from our muscles. It's very important that you know that. You've got fat in your body that stores energy too, but no, nope, your brain's not going to give that up. Good, I'm going to switch again. Are you okay, you guys? Okay, remember we got to do the fly. So as we tap to the side like this, we take our bent arms and we push our forearms up so that they're parallel to the floor, our forearms. And this is called a fly. So I'm doing a little baby squat here. I'm bending a little bit at the knee as I do my fly. Using the energy from my muscles. Not the energy from my fat. And one more. Good. I'm going to keep the weight where I have it because I'm going to do a heel dig and a bicep curl. And I make sure that my elbows are glued to my obliques or my sides as I reach forward and tap with my heel, pointing my toe up, which makes me a little unstable as I bicep curl, which is good because I want to work those core muscles deep inside my body. And when I am unstable, they wake up and start working. And one more. Switching again. So again, I'm going to tap back with my toe as I lean forward and straighten my arms. So I'm leaning, straightening, leaning, right? Lean back, tap back, keep the elbows high, and just move the forearms. Tricep, the complementary muscle to the bicep. It's on the back of the arm, between the shoulder and the elbow, your tricep. Anytime you straighten your arm, you're using your tricep. One more. Good work. Remember that row? I'm putting both of the weights in the same hand. I'm gonna put one foot toe straight ahead, the other one on an angle about 45 degrees, line up my heels, rest on my quad, let the weights dangle and lift them up to my armpit. And I'm rowing. My head's in neutral, so I'm not straining my neck or anything. I'm just rowing, working my back muscles. Good work. Three, two, one. And slowly pushing on your quads, straighten up, switch sides. Using the energy here I go, row, row, row your boat, using the energy from my muscles. You can do this very slowly, or you can go faster. You can do as many as you want. You can rest any time you want. Three more, three, two. Brian will say, you don't even know how to count to 10, one. And here I go, I'm holding on to my quad, not my knee and I'm straightening myself up. Never done that yet. No, good. So when I do the next hip thrust, I'm gonna just use my heavy one. So I'm gonna put the light one down by squatting and putting it down. See how I looked at the camera while I did that? So I wouldn't bend over like this. I wanna protect my low back as much as possible. So let the heavy one hang between your legs and hinge at the hips a little bit. Okay, and then keeping our legs straight we're just gonna bring it up to there. So push our hips forward, just bring it up to there. This is supposed to be a gentle workout, right? 
And we're just doing 10 of these using the energy in our where, Brian? Where are we getting the energy from? Uh, Pearl's cool thing. From where? <laughs> Not from the fat. No, that's right, the muscles. One more. Good. And then the last one, just because I can, I'm going to switch weights and get the lighter of the two. I haven't moved my legs, they're wide apart. I'm going to hold on to the weight as if it was a kettlebell, like a cannonball with a handle. Doesn't matter how heavy it is, but we're using light here. And I'm going to bring it right over my head. My arms are straight and I'm coming all the way down between my legs and doing a full squat for me and swing all the way back up. Yes, just like that. Make sure your form is as perfect as you can get it. So squat down wherever down is for you. It might be just to here. Take your time. Or it maybe will be really low, way down. Keep your head up, your torso up, your chest up. And we're only doing 10 of these. So three more. And one more. Good, and when we pick up the other weight, make sure you squat to get it and move it out of the way because we need a little space for the next part because we're going to do the aerobics next. That means we're going to get our heart beating faster than it, it normally is at rest. And my heart at rest is about 72 to 80 beats per minute. Okay, I know that I can tell by checking it with these two fingers, not my thumb because it has its own pulse. I want to check the pulse in my neck. Oh, so Brian, we're going to use these two fingers. Okay. We're going to put them on our artery in our neck on the other side. So if we're using this hand, we reach across, find the artery and the beating of our heart in our neck. So let me see if I can find it. I have to move my fingers around. The pads of the end of my fingers will be able to pick it up if I find it. They'll even be able to tell whether or not it's beating properly or irregularly. Might skip a beat, that's all normal. So I'm, I, I got it in my brain how fast it's going because after I do my aerobics, I wanna make sure it's going faster. How much faster? That's up to me, everybody's different. You should never do any kind of exercises if you're worried about your body in any way without going to the doctor first. Go to the doctor and say, hey doc, check me out, I want a physical, because I want to start an exercise program. So I'm going to assume this morning that everybody's done that sometime in the not too distant um, past. And uh, so we're going to do the aerobics now, right after the weights. Now you might say, hey, where are we going to get the energy to move our body really fast? Because we've used it all up from our muscles. Right. So we're going to get it from the fat. And your body, as I said, your brain doesn't want to give up that, that um, energy. It wants to keep it just in case you decide to starve yourself or we go on into a depression and there's no food. You know, COVID could take us there. And then your brain's going to have all that extra energy stored in your fat. We'll talk about that fat some other day because there's two different kinds of fat, the good stuff and the bad stuff. But anyway, so I've got my number of heartbeats at rest in my brain. So I'm just going to march here. This is not the aerobics. This is thinking, hey, what kind of aerobics am I going to do? Am I going to swim? Am I going to ride a bike? Am I going to run? What am, I, am I going to jump? So I think what I'll do is some stride jumps, but some low impact stride jumps that are going to look like this. So my arms are going straight out and I'm toe tapping. That's what I'm going to do for my aerobics. Now here's the deal. We're doing a Tabata, T-A-B-A-T-A, -A -A, Tabata, something like that. It's a Japanese person who invented this type of aerobic workout. They've studied what he came up with, which was years ago, and they decided that if you want to get really efficient doing your aerobic workout, 
just work as hard as you can for 20 seconds and then rest for two minutes. So I'm ready to go almost and I have to go as hard as I can. I might be going faster than these two or slower than these two, who, who knows? But it's gonna be for 20 seconds, so here I go. Breathe any way you want. Rest. And rest means rest. So it's supposed to be a two minute rest. So you look home. Well, why don't I just check my pulse in my neck to see if it's going a little bit faster. Hmm. Well, it is a little bit faster. Okay, so let's just march on the spot. This is number two, Tabata aerobics number two for my heart. Uh, this time, I think I'm just going to run on the spot, but I'm not going to take both feet off the ground. I'm gonna always have one foot on the ground and I'm gonna do it for 20 seconds and rest for two minutes. Here I go. Keep going. Rest, two minutes. Let's try the other side of my neck. Oh yeah, that brought my artery to the surface. It's going one, two, three, four, five. I have to rest for two minutes. So I do a 20 second really fast movement and then rest for two minutes. Now, have I rested for two minutes between the first one and the second one here? No. At the YMCA, they'll only tell you to rest for 10 seconds. They'll do a 20 second and then a 10 second rest. That's old science. The new stuff says, slow yourself down, get your heart rate back to normal. In fact, you can tell how fit you are by how quickly your heart rate goes from normal after it's been um, really, really worked hard and then comes back to normal. So if you're at say 70 beats per minute, and then you do this and it's 110 and you rest for two minutes if it comes right back down to 70 you're in great shape that's enough talking you're ready for the last one you only do it three times three times a week so forget that walking on the treadmill or going for a long run unless or swimming many many laps unless you're doing that just because it's conditioning but it isn't going to make your heart any healthier than this is so the last one here is going to be a squat. Because a squat, they say, works almost every muscle in your body. So my feet are shoulder width apart, right? And as I come down, I push on the outsides of my feet. And I push my bum back and arch my back a little bit, right? And I lift my arms up. And the higher I lift them, the harder my heart will work, right? But I have to make sure that I get my heart rate up. This is aerobics, so I'm going to have to do a million of these, or I have to go a little faster. You ready for the 20 seconds? Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Keep going. Ten. And stop. Good work. So you only have to do the 20 seconds as fast as you can, three times with a two minute rest in between. Check to see if your heart rate's coming down. See how long it takes. It really doesn't matter what kind of movement you do for 20 seconds. Um, we turn on our brain, it's called train the brain. Train the brain, there's lots of ways to do this. You could do a, a puzzle or you can learn something new off the internet, but we're gonna train the brain. So here's the first thing I want you to do. Whatever I do, you have to do right after me. So if I point to the sun up there and go one sun, you have to actually use your arm and point and say one sun. Because your brain learns best when your body does it. And then it learns second best when your eyes or your ears, especially your eyes do it. So you gotta, well, where's the sun? Oh, there it is, one sun. My body, 
I can see it and I can say it and hear it. Then I'll remember it. So here we go. One sun. One sun. Two eyes. Two eyes. Notice the movement. Two eyes. Three triangle. Three triangle. Okay, one sun. One sun. Two eyes. Two eyes. Three, three triangle. triangle. Now we're gonna there's twenty of these. They're called memory hangers, but we're only gonna do ten. But your job is to remember the ten because we're going to do something with the 10 when we're done, and I'm not telling you what they are. So that's why I'm repeating, because repeating helps your brain remember too. So one sun, one sun. two eyes, two eyes. Three, triangle, three triangle, four square. Four square. Right, and a square has equal sides, and there's four sides. So four square. So one sun, one sun two, eyes, two eyes, three triangle, three triangle four, square, four square, five fingers. Five fingers. Five fingers. Five fingers. Yeah, on each hand, right? Okay, one sun. One sun. Two eyes. Two eyes. Three triangle. Three triangle. Four square. Four square. Five fingers. Five fingers. Six sticks. Six sticks. Six drumsticks. Six drumsticks. Right, one sun. One sun. Two eyes. Two eyes. Three triangle. Three triangle. Four square. Four square. Five fingers. Five fingers. Six sticks. Six sticks. Six drumsticks. Six drumsticks. And when I was young and stupid, I used to drink a lot of it pop. Changed. <laughs> no, I used to drink a lot of pop, and Seven Up was my favorite one. Right? So 7-Up is I hold on to the 7-Up bottle and I take the top off. Make a, make a little noise. I can't even do that with my tongue. I'm going to have a drink. Got it? So it's one sun, one sun two, eyes, two eyes, three triangle, three triangle four, square, four square, five fingers, five fingers six sticks, six, six drumsticks, six drum seven, seven up, 7-Up, eight figure eight. I don't care if it's eight. this way or whether it's figure sideways, eight. but make a figure eight. So it's eight figure eight. One sun, one sun, two eyes, two eyes three, triangle, three triangle, four square, four square five, five fingers, fingers six, six sticks, six, six drumsticks, drum seven up, S seven up, eight figure eight, eight figure nine eight. baseball, because there's nine uh, innings and there's nine players on a team, so nine baseball, nine baseball, right, one sun, one sun, almost done, two, two eyes, eyes three, three triangle, triangle, four, four square, square, five, five fingers, fingers, six sticks, six, six, six drumsticks, six. seven up, eight figure eight. Nine baseball and ten hen. Ten hen. Ten what? Hen. The ten hen. You're a chicken and you're sitting on the eggs. eggs. So you, you just do a little squat as you say ten. So one sun. One sun. Two eyes. Two eyes. Three triangle. Three triangle. Four square. Four square. Five, five fingers. fingers six six, sticks, six six drumsticks. Drumstick, seven up. Seven. Eight figure eight. Eight figure eight. Eight figure eight, Brian. Eight figure eight. Nine baseball. Nine baseball. Ten hen. Same hand. Okay, Daffy, you're first. Go ahead and do them for us. One sun, two eyes, three triangle, four square, five hands, and six, seven, six drumsticks, seven up, up <laughs> eight, eight, figure eight, eight, nine, baseball, baseball, and one hand. Yeah, ten hands. Ten hands. Brian, sir. Four eyes. One sun. I was going to go four eyes. <laughs> <laughs> two sun. One sun, two eyes, four triangle, four square, five fingers, six sticks, seven up, figure eight, baseball. Yeah. And hen. Yeah, because ten rhymes with hen. Right. You got that? Good. So we're going to, when we get to the drink up portion of this workout, we're going to actually make those on paper, pick with pictures, each of us, so we can hang them on our fridge so we can look at them every day for a week, just for a week. And we won't need that on our fridge anymore because no. it'll be in here in the long term memory forever. And then if you want to, I'll, ta I'll take you in the future, I'll take you to the next step. What do you do with those 10 memory hangers you've got inside your head? Because it's important here. And the first thing we're going to do is get into that table position. You know where we're on our hands and our knees. By the way, these are all back exercises, not just your low back, but the other uh, parts of your back too. So we're going to get into the table position, but I have to get down, right? And I want to want I want to get down safely. So what I'm going to do is I remember my um, bend for health. It was like this part of the golden eight, and I can do that. And when I get to touch the ground, 
right there, even though I'm bending at the knee, that doesn't matter. I'm just trying to get down. Then I can take one leg and put it down, knee, and then I'm there. That's how easy it is. So I have to make sure again that I'm in the table position with my hands below my shoulders and my hands in front of my knees. They're all lined up. Okay, if I'm sideways, I look kind of like this. Can you see me? Yeah, I think so. Right, if your hands are too far away and your arms are on an angle, that's not good for your, your uh, posture. So get it in the right position. And sometimes, depending on how my wrists feel, I have a lot of trouble um, putting my hands below my shoulders. So sometimes I make a fist and I do it like this so my arms are straight. They're not really locked, but they're straight. Or you can use your hands. Okay, so you're just going to relax here and let your belly sag. That makes a little saddle in your low back. I don't have one. No, but if you just practice being here, your, your, your toes could be curled, or maybe you're just flat out with your toes. You could take your shoes off. Whatever you want to do, just look down in neutral with your head and relax everything. And we're going to breathe in through our nose and blow out through our mouth. Now I'm trying to take a pretty big deep breath. So when I do that, I breathe in through my nose, my abdomen where my belly button is should get bigger because my diaphragm, which is a breathing core muscle, as I breathe in, it pushes down and pushes all the organs in the lower part of my abdomen out of the way. And that's why your belly gets bigger. The air is actually up in your lungs. Your back muscles, your serratus muscles in your back are pulling the ribs down. Your serratus muscles in the front are pushing the ribs up, making room for your lungs to expand. If you've got any COVID symptoms or any, if you've been diagnosed with COVID, you want to practice deep breathing. It'll help tremendously. So here I go again. I'm going to just be relaxed. I'm in, I'm in this uh, cow or camel position, they call it, with the saddle in my low back. And I'm going to breathe in through my nose blow out through my mouth. We'll do one more breath. This time I'm going to really, really, really concentrate on whether or not my belly is getting bigger as I breathe in. Well, maybe we'll do one more because when I blow out, I want my belly button to come up toward my spine. I want to suck it in. So here I go with the breath in and blow out. Good. So being in this position works your serratus muscles on the front over your ribs and your serratus muscles on the back over your ribs just by breathing and in, being in this position. Good. So I want you to make sure that your knees are even wider apart now. Get them wider. Bring your big toes together. You can even overlap your big toes. Put your arms and your hands way out in front of you, maybe even off the mat, and push your hips back into your heels. And now I'm coming up a little bit to relax. I only held that for three. But my big toes are together, and my knees are wide apart, and here I go back again with my hips. And then I come up one more time slowly. Not up very much though, and when I go down, my arms are as straight as I can get them, and my armpits are heading toward the mat, and here I go. But why don't we try the breath? We'll take a deep breath in and then we'll lower ourselves and then we'll breathe normal. So here we go. Now blow out. And 
then come up slowly. And then as I come up, I'm going to straighten my feet, keep my knees where they are, and bring my belly button toward the mat and look up a little bit and be a cobra, a snake. So I'm arching my back in the opposite direction and then relax a little bit. And here I go again, bringing my belly button toward the ground, pushing my hips down and looking in, in a nice, comfortable, normal direction. Don't strain your neck and push back again. So I'm going to take a deep breath in and then as I come forward, I'm going to blow out and then I'll just breathe normal. So here goes my breath. Blow out. Breathe normal right there. Okay, good. Now I'm going to move my hands back. Okay, and I'm just, I'm in that position that I started in. Okay, now I'm going to suck my belly button up and I'm going to bring my head to my chin and round my back and make myself into a cat that's angry. And relax. Then I try that again. So I'm sucking my belly button up, rounding my back, pushing down with my hands, and bringing my chin to my chest. And I'm going to do it one more time, except I'm going to take a deep breath in. And as I move into the cat position, I'm going to blow out and then I'm going to hold it there and breathe normal. So big deep breath in, blow out, breathe normal. And relax. Okay, so here we go. We're going to take our right hand and we're going to stretch it out. So we're balancing on our two knees and our left hand. And when I lift my right arm up like this and stretch it out, I can feel that side of my body coming up. So I have to adjust. I have to lower my hip down so it's flat on the back. And hold it there. Let's put the hand down and do the other side. So you lift your arm up, make sure it's straight, point your fingers. It's parallel to the ground. Lower your hips on that side. Keep your head in neutral and relax. Lots to think about, right? It's a brain thing too. Thank heavens we did the brain exercises. Okay, relax. Now here goes the right leg, except this time the right leg is going out behind and my toe is gonna to be up, touching the ground. Don't lift your leg up when you do that. Your low back is, co is uh, compromised. Unless you're in great shape, don't lift your leg up. Just point your toe, put it down on the floor, and hold it. Okay, let's bring it back in. Let's try the other side. Let's take a breath first, and then blow out as we do it. So, blow out, straighten the leg, put the toe down. and come back in. Okay, let's take our right arm straight out and our left leg straight out. Touch your toe with your left leg and hold it there. Relax, switch sides. Lots to think about. The breath is important, but right now I'm just trying to remember, what do I do with my left arm? Yep, and what do I do with my right leg? Got it? and everything's balanced, lower my back so it's flat. It's a posture thing, right? If it's not flat on the back, you might as well not do it. Okay, and relax. And then the last part to this, and of course, you guys that are in better shape than we are, or at least me, you could hold it longer. You could even do this, I'll just show you this one. So I've got my arm out and my leg out. I can bring my arm into my knee and pull my knee up and don't touch the ground with my leg. And I can do that, which is the same exercise except a little harder. And then I can try it on the other side, arm out, leg back, 
toe touching and then bring the hand to the knee as I bring my leg in. Straighten it out, put it down or don't put it down and bring it in. This is called sweeping the floor. We all love to sweep the floor. Okay. Lie on your back and use a pillow. So we're going to start, before we get into the dead bug, we're going to start by doing a little pelvic tilt. So we're going to push our low back into the mat by moving our hips, and then we're going to let it go back to the natural arch. We're going to do that 10 times at our own pace. So I work with my hips here, push my low back in, relax. Push it in, relax. 10 times. Now it seems to me that the effort here is pushing it down to the ground. So if I take a deep breath when I'm in neutral and then as I push my low back down, blow out, that would work my diaphragm. Why not? Let's try that. Breath, push your low back in, blow out. Relax. Breath. I'm going to just assume that that's 10. If it isn't 10, pause the, butt, the, the uh, video and do 10. Isn't that great? You can pause me anytime you want and then come back and start it up again. So right now I'm going to take my right leg, leave my left leg the way it is, and straighten it. That means I, I want to push my knee away from my body Flex my foot and get that leg straight and get it up if I can. Try the other side. Straighten, flex, push the knee away. Get it up. Back to the other side. Are you there, Daffy? Yeah. How does this feel? It are your hamstrings tight? Your hamstrings are good. What about yours, Brian? Tight. Mine are tight too. Why is Daffy's not tight and ours are? She rides a bike. Right. The bike's good for you. Get one. Even if it's used, get it and ride it. You can be young again. Okay, here I go with both legs. Flex the foot. Push the knees away. Lift them up. Okay, down I go. If that's too hard, take your hands and put them underneath the bony part of your hips. Now lift them up. Should be easier. And relax. Okay, here go the arms. Just the arms. Lift them up. Straight overhead. Flex the hands so that you're holding on to heaven. Heaven is in your hands. Literally. Okay, relax the arms. So if I need to do the breath, I gotta take a deep breath and blow out as I lift them up. So here I go, breath. Blow out, come the arms, blow out. And Make the palms hold heaven, and then when I run out of breath, breathe normally, and then down I go. This time when I lift up my arms, I'm going to lift up, up my hips a little bit. So breath first. Here go the hips and the arms. And then back down, hips and arms. Let's try that again. That looks, sounds like a good one because that's a bridge too and that's good for all body parts. Here I go with the breath. 
arms and hips. And relax. Now that wasn't on purpose. I was trying to do the dead bug with you. I thought, why not throw in the hips? The bridge. So let's go back to the dead bug. So here go my arms and here go my legs at the same time. And relax. Let's try it again. Arms and legs, same time. Flex your feet, flex your hands, flex the wrists. Good. Dead bug one more time. This time, when you get up there, grab onto your toes. Here I go. Arms and legs. Grab my toes. Relax. And the last time when I get up there and I grab my toes, I want to go from side to side just a little bit to massage my low back. So here I go with my arms and my legs, grab my toes, and a little bit of a massage. Okay, let's go. Relax. Roll on your side. Stack your legs. Rest on your forearm. So I'm resting on my forearm. I'm straight from my shoulders down through my knees to my feet. Nothing's bent. This hand is going to hold on to my shoulder. Okay? Just hold it here. When you're ready, lift the leg up. Hold it there. When you're ready, bend your knee and bring it forward and put it on the ground. Now, everything else has to stay stacked. You're holding onto your shoulder, you're resting on your forearm, the leg is up, you've bent at the knee, you're putting your knee down but don't roll into this and if you can't get the knee very far that's as far as it goes for me otherwise I'm rolling into it and that's not right so just shove it forward hold it there and relax okay the last part to this is you're going to get your hips up so I'm going to use this hand and my feet, maybe I'll put the one in front of the other. I'm going to use my feet. I'm going to use my forearm. I'm going to get my hips up and hold it there. And relax. You might not get to all that. You might only get to this stacked side position holding onto your shoulder. And that might be it. Switch sides. Check my posture first. Make sure my elbow's below my shoulder. You don't want to ruin that. Okay, grab onto your shoulder with your free arm here, your hand, and relax and just stay right there. Now, believe it or not, you're working those serratus or serratus, you know, tomato, tomato. You're working your serratus muscles in your back and in your front, covering your ribs. Okay, so let's just hold it there. Let's try lifting the leg up. Let's bend the leg and push the knee forward toward the ground without rolling into the ground. Boy, I'm so tight, that's as far as I can go. When I'm done this workout, I'm going to do a workout. 
going fishing. Brian's going fishing. What are you doing, Daphne? Gardening. 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 We're all going to keep moving, except maybe Brian, unless he catches the fish. Yeah. Okay, put it down again. Let's put the one foot in front of the other because we're going to lift our hips. We're going to take the free arm and push down in front, maybe. Here go the hips. Up we go. I just felt some rain. Who cares? It's up. And rest. Good work. Turn back over. If you've got water close by, get a drink. Now lie down. I'm going to move a little closer so you can see me. I'm going to, or maybe back. I'm going to lie down flat on my back with my head on my pillow with one leg bent, the foot's touching the ground, right? Leg is straight, the other one's straight, flexed foot. All that's going to turn on all kinds of muscles in your body. We're doing that for a reason, especially those core muscles. And then I'm going to lie down. Let me get down here. I'm going to put my hands underneath my low back if I can do it. If I can't, that's okay. And then where's my pillow? I'm watching the rain come down toward my face from that black cloud overhead. No, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pretend that my pillow is a weigh scale and I want to get my head and my shoulders off the weigh scale. I don't want it to have any weight on it. So I'm resting on the weigh scale. Once everything is tight in that straight leg, I lift my head up and my shoulders just a little bit to get them off the weigh scale and look straight at the cloud and hold it there. Now my hands are in my low back to make sure that I don't push down with my low back. My hands, my fingers won't let me push down. And then I rest, switch sides. So once the straight leg is flexed and tight and the knee is down toward the floor, I'm going to lift my head up off the scale and maybe my shoulders a little bit and hold it there. And rest. So I'm holding it up for about 10, switch sides. This is great for your lumbar spine. Okay, here we go, everything's tight, posture's perfect. Up goes the head and the shoulders a little bit. And rest. Now, are you holding your breath when you lift your head? Well, you're supposed to be blowing out. You take a deep breath in when you're in the beginning position, and then you blow out when you lift your head. As soon as you've run out of air, you put your head back down. As you bring your head down, you're breathing in. So here we go, breath in. Blow out, lift up. Here I go down, breathing in. Blow out, lift up. Breathe in on the way down. Last time, blow out. You got that? That's the pancake. Good, relax for a minute. So my arms are at my sides. I want them in a T. Can you get them into a T? Can you lift your legs up so that they're bent and together? Can you roll them to the one side? with your opposite shoulder blade touching the ground. So if I go to the right, my left shoulder blade has to stay on the ground. If I go back to center and then to the left with my legs that are together, my right shoulder blade has to stay on the ground. And do a few of those on your own at your own speed. I like to call this the sausage roll. Why? Hey, my knees just came apart. Stick them together. I think my shoulder blade came up too, so I guess I can't go that far. Knees together.
We'll do one more just because. Right, legs down. Well, believe it or not, magically we got into a chair. I'm sure you have a chair or something to sit on at home. If you had one of those Swiss balls, you know, those round balls that are about this big, that would be perfect. So I'm going to get to the edge of the chair again because I want to be able to sit up tall. I want my back to be pretty straight. I don't want any chairs doing this to me. I want to sit up the end and I want to get my one leg out in front. So one is bent, the other one is straight. My foot is flexed, you know, pointing up toward my eyes. Right, I'm sitting like this, good. And I'm going to grab a hold of, if this is the straight leg, this is the arm that's grabbing the shoulders, the trapezius, but the squeeze, right? So what I'm going to do is tighten that leg to engage my core muscles, my transverse abdominis and my multifidus. My diaphragm is a core muscle, it's all about breathing. And my kegel muscles in my pelvic floor, squeeze those. And then look up at the sky, see if the good weather is back, and just breathe normal. So this is a nerve flossing exercise for the low back. It helps all the nerves in your lumbar spine have a little holiday. And you can hold this as long as you want while you're in the doctor's office waiting for your results. Or maybe just sitting out in your backyard. Okay, but your head is up and your toe is up and the leg is straight. Got it? Switch sides. So this one's flat, this one's straight, this one's flexed. It's touching the ground, the heel. That arm on that side grabs the shoulders and squeezes them to get the blood into your trapezius so your neck is okay. And then you look up. Nerve flossing or nerve gliding, if you want to look it up on the internet. For the lumbar spine, low back. How long do you hold it? As long as you want. Okay, relax. Back to this leg, you're gonna take the foot in close to the chair or under the chair. You're gonna point your toe and lift your heel up. So my foot is, this one's just holding you in a steady position. This one is the one we're working. So my toe is touching, my heel is up. Good it, got it? So since this is the leg I'm working, this is the arm that grabs their trapezius again. And then I put my chin to my chest. So when the leg's back, I look down. So that's about 20 seconds. I can feel it cramping in the bottom of my foot. So I need to do this exercise where I lift my heels up off the ground. I gotta do that more often. So now I'm switching sides. So what did I do? I took this leg now, my new leg, and I put it under the chair on my toes, lifting my heel up. Since that's the leg, I reach across this way. And then because I've got my foot underneath me, I look down to see what's going on. So relax, just before we move into a stretch, a final one stretch, uh, just to review the low back there, we did that resting child thing at the beginning. We did the cow, cat, cow, camel thing. We did the bird, dog thing. We did the dead bug. We did the pancake when we're lying down, you know, trying to uh, lift our head off the scale. And we did a little bit of a bridge just because we did the side plank, working those serratus muscles. We did that. And now we're gonna do a stretch. And we're gonna, we're gonna, we might as well use the chair. So let's just cross over. So if this leg is going over, 
they're going to turn that way and grab the chair somehow and hold it. What are we stretching? The serratus anterior is a fan-shaped large muscle on the front of your body. Moving the ribs up as you breathe and the serratus posterior muscle is a large Y-shaped muscle pulling the lower ribs down as you breathe on the back of your body. So we'll call that 20 seconds. Good, relax, switch sides. This one comes over that one, so we're gonna go this way. That's good, that's about 20 seconds. Now, if I was doing this by myself, with nobody around, no cameras, I would do that again, and again, and again, and again, 20 seconds, 20 seconds, 20 seconds, so that I do each side for at least a minute. If I was in a really, really, really ambitious mood, I'd do it for two minutes. So there's your stretch. We're gonna finish off with a drink up, but we're going to uh, sit in, up, up in the porch there, and uh, get away from the rain and the wind, and we're gonna do something um, with those uh, one sun, two eyes, three triangle things. So if you could get yourself some toilet paper, I need you to get yourself some toilet paper that's about that long. You know, I don't know, I think that's about 10 squares. So get a, a strip of toilet paper, get yourself a marker, a magic marker. And if you haven't got that, just watch closely. So they've got their toilet paper strip. It doesn't have to be toilet paper. It can be a strip of anything, any size, as long as you can see it when you're going into your fridge. So they're going to put a number one. Hold it. We're going to, the number one is, is a sun. So they're going to draw a nice, in the square, in the toilet paper, they're going to draw a sun. And in the inside, they're going to put the number one. So it might have some rays in it, right? So you know it's not a ball, it's a sun. Yeah, then they're going to leave a little space, and then below that, so since number two is eyes, they're going to draw two eyes, and the two is going to be the nose. So two eyes, don't forget the, the eyeballs. And then you're going to put a nose, which will be a two. Okay, and then number three was a triangle, so they're going to draw a triangle, num number three, and then they're going to make a, a three inside it. And if your triangle has three equal sides, it's called what kind? Equilateral triangle. Yeah, so that, that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. It could be a right angle triangle because we do a lot of uh, exercises in right angles uh, with our arms and our legs. So anyway, number three is a triangle. Number four is going to be a square. So remember, all the sides have to be equal. Put the four in the middle. And then if you put a little line through each side in the middle, just a little stroke in the middle of each side, that means they're all equal. So like a little straight line through it, yep, just like that Daffy and, and Brian. That means if you were doing um, any kind of geometry and that was the way the picture looked, you'd go, hey, those are equal sides, it must be a square. Number five was fingers, just draw one hand. And then in the wrist, put the five. Any way you want, as long as you've got a five in there, right? And then number six was what? Drumsticks. So draw a little circle for a drum and then two sticks hitting the drum. And then maybe in the drum you could put your six or something. Yeah, so you're the one that's going to have to remember what these are. <laughs> so it doesn't matter if you're an excellent artist or not. Um, you, you, if somebody might say, hey, what's that picture of? And you're going to go, that's a drumstick. Okay, number seven. What was number seven? Seven up. Seven up. Draw a bottle of pop and label it seven. Right, and then number eight's easy. It's just a figure eight. So just make a figure eight going sideways or vertical. I don't care. You don't even have to put eight because you know what it is. It's eight. And then number nine was... Baseball. Baseball. So I want you to draw a bat and a ball. 
So a stick for a bat and then a round circle for a ball. And maybe you could put a nine on the ball. <laughs> you know, the eight ball, the nine ball, and baseball. Right, and then the last one is the chicken sitting on the egg. So you want to draw a chicken with at least one egg. And maybe if you put a little stick beside the egg, it'll, it'll be the number 10. Something like that. So a chicken. You know, chickens are fat little round birds with a beak. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you need at least one egg and maybe a, a stick which could be straw and that egg and that stick could be a tent under the mother chicken the hen and then when you've done that can you show it to me? Turn the whole thing around, like hold it up so I can see it and point it at the crowd here so they can see your yeah, creation. creation. Yeah, that's great. And the pictures are a little different, but that's all that matters because it's personal, right? Yeah. Now, here's the deal. The hardest part is to get this. For Brian, it's easy. He just takes it in the house and sticks it wherever he wants to put it. But I recommend the fridge because everybody goes in the fridge. But Daffy's got to get home, so she'll probably stop and wipe her nose on the way home with this. And All right. If it falls apart, make another one. <laughs> okay, so that's the drink up. Your job is to remember those for next week, and you won't have any problems. It'll just be in your brain permanently. Okay? okay. Over and out.